In this video, I'll show you a simple method for creating chibi characters in Clip Studio Paint. But first, what is a chibi character? Chibi characters are characters that have been simplified and distorted down to fit a head height between two and three heads tall. The facial features are usually really simplified and the eyes take up the biggest area of the face. They don't always have noses. As you can see, the two head tall one has no nose. And their hands and feet are often smaller, although you can go the opposite route and make them bigger. It's really a matter of preference. We'll be focusing on a two head tall figure for this video. And here's how I break down the proportions. As you can see, each head height is also broken in half. So the top half is just the top of the head and all of the facial features fit within that second half of the head. The body is also broken up this way. The top half is all the torso, the bottom half is the legs. You can break this up even further in the head by splitting that bottom half in half again. And the top quarter is your eyes and the bottom quarter is where you fit your mouth and your cheeks. You can do the same thing with the legs and if you split the bottom half in half, you'll find that is exactly where your knees go. There are other ways to split this up, but this is the easiest way, and I just wanted to keep it simple for the video. So let's get started. First, we're gonna just take the circle tool, just so the circle is perfect. And you can see I'm using blue here just to make it a little easier to see. First, just gonna divide the circle in half. We're gonna do a three quarter view. So the line is a little closer to the left. And we're going to divide it again horizontally, roughly in the center. And we're going to put the contour line for the little cheek and the chin. And then add the bottom line for our eyes. Just rough in the ear. You don't have to get the placement right, you know, perfect right away. Just to get an idea of where everything is. And just snap in the eye boxes. This is just the undergrowing, so things don't have to be perfect yet. Just get it where you'd like it to be. And just try to remember to keep your shapes rounded. And chibis are round, so the rounder you can keep your shapes, the cuter. At this point, all your guidelines are done, so now you just want to open another layer and ink over all the lines that you want to keep. You can lower the opacity of the guide layer just to make it a little less distracting. And you just trace over everything that you want to keep and you can worry about fixing all the lines later. Just make sure you're happy with the contour of the face and keep your ears simple. And here we'll go on to the eyes and just quick rounded contour. Really how you draw your eyes is just a matter of preference and you can do them any way you like. Just make sure that they do take up at least one quarter of that second half of the face in order to you know, preserve that chibi look. I'm gonna jump down here to add the mouth and you can do this any way you want to as well. Just try not to make it too wide. You can make it as, you can make them open their mouths as far as you want to. They seem pretty rubbery, but just try not to make it too wide. And I'm just going to jump back up to my eyes and make sure everything works together. And I do like to do both sides at the same time just to help with the symmetry, make sure everything is facing the same direction. Everything's just quick lines and simple shapes. And even the eyebrows, keep them simple. And do them however you like. Do more, do less. I like to make my eyebrows a little thick. That way, if I want to change their expressions, they're easy to see. At this point, I also like to go in and fill in my darks. You can save this part until the coloring stage, but I just like to go ahead and get it in now. And just go ahead and add in any little detail lines I want to have. Just go on ahead and decorate them however you like. And then I'll just go on up and start on the hairline. And you put this in roughly halfway through that first half of the head, so you can say about a quarter way. 
and that should be exactly where your hairline goes. And then you can go on and add in all the little detail lines for the hair. Keep it simple, try not to go too overboard. I'll also go in and darken any lines that I just want to make a little stronger at this point. Okay. Now I'm just going to go on and start on her hair. Decided to give her ponytails, so I'm just going to rough in the location of her little hair ties. Just trying to get an idea of where it's going to go. It doesn't have to be perfect yet. And you can erase some of it out if you want to really get an idea of the location. I can see now that the one on the left side is a little too far forward, but I'll fix that later. If your character is going to have really long hair, as in longer than shoulder length, you can save this part until after the body's done. It would actually be a little bit easier. That way you won't have to guess where the body intersects. So I'm just gonna put the ponytails in. Now you can really see how that one is too far forward, but I said I'll fix that later. And you can race it out, make it a little easier to see. And now I'll just go ahead and get that put where it belongs. That's better. So this is a good time to just go in and do any fixing of anything because we're just about done. Now just want to go in and add little details, these little angie bubbles, <laughs> and just put the detail lines in the hair. Do that however you like, or you could even leave them out if you want. Keeps it even simpler. And just want to strengthen up my lines a little bit. And that is that. just wanted to take a couple seconds to show you that the proportion breakdown is the same regardless of which direction you decide to face the head. It's still split in half vertically and horizontally and then that bottom half of the face is split in half again to make a quarter. So everything is still broken down the same exact way regardless of which direction the head is facing. All right now on to the body. All right, here's a quick and easy way to get your two head height. Go back to your guide layer that you used to make the head and duplicate it. All right, so now we'll go to the move tool and just slide that down. And you automatically have your head height of two. So now you just wanna make a couple of little guidelines. So we'll put one at the halfway point, or at least what looks like the halfway point. Might have to adjust it after. And put one underneath the head and that's where your heels will go. And that gives you your perfect head height, so you don't need the head anymore. Just get rid of that really quick. And now you can look at it and see if the line's proper. So I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. And then you don't need that either. If you like chubby chibis like I do, then your body is going to be sort of a pear shape. So see that bottom of that shape will be roughly at that halfway line. See mine dips just a little bit beneath it, which is fine. Just don't go too far down and just try to keep everything nice and round and you know, fix it as you go. The rounder the better. And if it's round enough, you'll find that that bottom area of it, if you make a line across, will create a rough circle. Okay, now for our legs. It's a shallow S-curve. That's our halfway point there. It will bend outward for the upper leg and then it will curve back inward for the lower leg at the knee point, which is halfway. And the leg will look a little long at this point because it does look like there's too much, but by the time everything is finished, the proportions will look correct. The back of the upper leg really doesn't need any curve to it, just to keep things simple. And the bottom should curve outward, just to give them, you know, the illusion of a calf. Okay. The other leg, same thing. The knees should still line up, even though the leg is at a different angle. 
the knees are still at that halfway point. And I'm putting the knee up this time. So as you can see, the lines are really simple. It's just, you know, a little curve here, a little curve here. And the chibi we're doing this time is going to have very small feet. I was talking about that earlier. The feet can be large or small. And you can fiddle around with the lines for the legs as you go and decide whether you want, you know, a little thicker or a little thinner. You can erase your lines to get a better idea of what you got and just basically mess with it until you find what you like. I'm just gonna clean things up a little just to make things a little bit easier to see. You don't really have to do all of this yet. You can save all of the fixing until we get to the inking stage. I just want to do a little bit right now. Now for the arms, the elbows roughly at the halfway point, just like it was for the knees. And just like with the el just like with the legs, it doesn't really matter which directions the arms are facing. The elbows should be at the same point, halfway. And with chibis, their arms are a little bit shorter. So as you can see, if it was a normal size figure, the arms would be a bit longer. Actually, that's a little long, but we'll fix that afterwards. So um, make them a little bit shorter and it helps to preserve that, you know, kind of cute look if their arms aren't too long. Think proportions like a baby. It's the same thing. Just keep the arms on the shorter side and try not to make them too thick or too fat. Not too thin either, but you know, Really, you just do whatever suits your style. Everybody has a different way of doing this, so you just have to do whatever looks best. Okay, as for the hands, you also want to keep them on the small side. The overall size of the hands is roughly half the length of the arm. So from the wrist to the elbow, that's about as long as you want your entire hand to be. Uh, they're cuter if they're a little chubby. Um, you can decide how many fingers you want to do. See, I'm just going to do a three finger hand. You can do a four finger. It depends. Or if you don't want to, you don't have to do fingers at all. You can do a mitten hand, which simplifies things even further. It's really just a matter of preference, whatever you want to do. So just keep your fingers round and your little thumb. Make sure that's nice and round too. For this hand, I'm going to sort of put her hand in a loose fist. And with this shape, you might have to cheat a little bit and make the hand slightly bigger than it should be. Not so much that it's no you know noticeable for anyone looking, but you might just have to fudge it just a tiny bit so that you can actually see all the fingers and see what position the hand is actually in. As long as you don't go overboard with it, it shouldn't be noticeable. At this point, the underdrawing for your body is pretty much done. All that's left is to go in and clean up your drawing, fix anything that needs fixing, and then erase anything that's too distracting. Once all that's done, we'll just open up a new layer like before and ink all the lines that we want to keep. She is. You can just check to make sure you've got everything in. There's the body line. And see if there's anything to add or to fix. I want to add in the little details here. Put in the little knee dimple. Just make any adjustments before we move on. And now I also just want to um, adjust the body line a little bit. The shape is okay, but I think I'll like it better just to give her a little bit of a illusion of a waist and to just fix the front leg contour and I just want to drop this a little bit. I think that looks a bit better. At this point you can just adjust it however you feel is necessary and that's pretty much it. Now here she is all finished just so you can see. Um, Here's how the clothes are done. It's really not uh, not too much. 
you just come off the body line just a little. It doesn't have to be too much there. Pretty much just follow the contour. Same thing with the shoes, just make sure you come off of it just enough so that it doesn't look like it's painted on. I also added a couple of clipping layers just to change the color of some of the lines and give her a semi-lineless look. And here is how that looks with the color. And that's it. There she is. I hope you found this little video helpful and will go on to draw some squishy little chibis of your own. Thanks for watching!